Hi everyone and welcome back to part two of our winter bunker technique. We discussed just now about the effects of bounce angle on the club. Now we're in the real situation we can put it to the test. There's one other little thing you can do when you're coming into a bunker in the winter time and you're unsure of the depth of sand that you're going to be playing with and there is some evidence left by the golf ball. I've created two artificial situations basically here. What I've done here is to hammer down this sand into a tight, compact, wet, flat, hard surface. Um, and here we've got a standard raked area. But the evidence you might be looking for when you come into a bunker is the trail of the golf ball that it's, uh, that's been left behind when it's come in. As you can see on the hard surface, it's barely made a trail through this sand at all. So it's a further indication that the golf ball is not sitting down into soft sand. It sat high on the surface and we can see that sand is pretty, pretty compacted. On the other side over here, you can see a deep thick trail where the golf balls rolled into the bunker. And that's given me evidence. Obviously we've got a raked area here. It's pretty clear that the, the golf ball is sitting on some nice fluffy sand, but look for this sort of evidence here because there might be areas less obvious than I've created here, which will give you a clue as to whether you're playing off hard sand or wet sand. And that's where we start playing around with this all important bounce angle that we discussed just now. So in my standard bunker shot from a dry sand position, me personally, I place the ball a little bit forward of center. I rotate the club face into a slightly open position that increases the bounce angle on the back of the golf club. And that will allow the golf club to get through the sand and I got maximum loft on the club. Now, as I come to this hard sand bunker shot, if I play it in exactly the same sort of way with an open club face, the club is going to hit the sand behind the golf ball as it should do, but that hard sand won't accept the club going into it. It's going to bounce the club literally off that hard surface. The leading edge comes up into the golf ball. Even if it skidded the club forward, the leading edge is still lifted off the ground because of the open position created by that um, bounce angle. So the change in technique I'm gonna make here is to move the ball position a little further back in my stance. Instead of the club face being open, I'm now gonna rotate the club in my hand so it's now square. Because the ball position is a little further back, my hands go a little further forward. That's gonna make sure that sharper leading edge can now cut into the sand behind the golf ball and get in underneath it. The loft on the club face being my lob wedge, I've got more than enough to get it over the bank in front of me. Inevitably, this type of shot comes out a little bit lower, a little bit faster. So you've gotta look for what run out room you've got beyond the flag stick. It's not gonna pop up in the air and stop as softly and as quickly as a normal greenside bunker shot. But at least from this position, I got the leading edge getting underneath the golf ball. And I'm out and I'm in play. If I'd opened up that club face, it would have bounced off that harder surface and probably would have thinned into the bank in front of me. And I've got yet another bunker shot. Try that in your practice. Get it out on the golf course. It'll save you some shots.